Hi and welcome to Conservation Invasion. I'm Jax Malcolm and today we're going to be invading Los Angeles Zoo and Botanical Gardens. Our mission today is to learn about the California Condor Recovery Program. Let's invade! We're in the Condor Center where you can be a biologist and study the condors. When you come in, make sure to grab your zookeeper bag and your clipboard so that you can do your research. We're here at the Condor Health Center, where you can be a veterinarian and help one of these condors. A surgery is about to begin. You can learn how to be a mama condor and feed the chicks. What is your name and job title? My name is Michael Clark. I'm an animal keeper at the LA Zoo. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at the LA Zoo? I am in charge of breeding and the care of all the California condors in the collection here. Uh, the, the condors uh, program here is primarily a breeding project to supply birds for release to the wild. Why did the LA Zoo get involved with the California condors? Uh, it's kind of a California heritage thing that the California condor is native to LA County. And so it was just sort of a natural marriage for any of these local wildlife things. Uh, a lot of the uh, people that worked at the zoo at the time in the, in the early 80s were very involved in keeping, uh, keeping track of the condors and that kind of thing. So it was just sort of a n natural evolution to that. Why is it important to save condors? Condors, uh, they are a, a big part of the ecosystem. Um, kind of at the top of the food chain in sort of to the side, you know, you have your, your top predators and then you have the ones that sort of live right alongside of them. Um, the, the California condor is part of our natural heritage here in the United States and California especially, where they're, they're the last, this is the, sort of the last stronghold of them. And so it's, it's up to the, um, the uh, Department of Interior to preserve all of our natural resources. Where did the condors who live here come from? Uh, all of them came from Southern California because that was the last sort of uh, population that was sort of hanging on in the wild was uh, you know, Los Angeles County, Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, and Kern County. That little sort of the, the southern part of the Sierras, somewhere around Magic Mountain, that area is where they all were living. And so at the uh, sort of the, the, the last ditch effort they were all caught up and brought into captivity for their own safety so that we could breed them. How many condors are there now? Uh, it's a good question. The, the number's changing all the time because we, we have so many, so it's a good problem to have. Uh, we, the lowest number got down to 22, and now we're somewhere between 480 and 500. So most of them in the, are in the wild, not all of them are accounted for, so they may be missing for months at a time and then they show up and somebody says, oh, I counted number somebody, and so that means he's still out there somewhere. So the number is always changing because there are some deaths every year and there's also uh, hatches. So new birds are, are produced every year and some die every year. So the numbers are constantly in flux. In the spring and summer, it's usually going up and any time after that, it's going down. What are some misunderstandings about condors? Probably that they're ugly. <laughs> um, most people look, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of that too. When I first saw condors, I'm like, wow, that's a really weird looking bird, and why does it look like that? And it looks very strange. But when you're around them for a long time, you really start to see the beauty in them and, and you know, the reason that they're bald and they have all the skin exposed on their face, like most birds are covered in nice, feathers that are really beautiful. Condors don't have that, but what they do make up with it is lots of expression, behaviors. They can change the shape of their face, the color of their face, and uh, just the, the, the attitude of the feathers and stuff like that. They are really, really beautiful birds and, and very, very intelligent and inquisitive and just really, really interesting. If kids come to the zoo, can they visit condors? 
No, we do not have currently an exhibit. There's an exhibit planned eventually, uh, but right now what they can do is they can come to this Children's Discovery Center, which is where we're at. Condors eat dead things, carrion, things that they find out in the wild that are dead. The bigger, the better. From, from my experience, knowing what they like, the bigger the carcass, the better. A deer, a cow, a horse, something like that is you'll see a lot of birds on something like that. A whale carcass on the beach up in Big Sur. I think. So dead animals is what they eat. Would a condor make a good pet? Unfortunately, no. They, in a zoo setting, if you're a good animal trainer, they, they might be a good pet, but most people wouldn't be able to have the space that it would require to have something like that. Um, they are very affectionate if they are imprinted on people and that kind of thing but we don't want that for the species. The species belongs in the wild, and so everything that we rear goes to the wild. Um, not to mention it's totally illegal. What is the biggest threat to condors? The number one threat to condors, there are many threats of them. Most of them are very minor, but there is one major threat to condors, and that is lead poisoning. Um, the, where do they get the lead from? They eat dead animals. Well. A lot of times dies, uh, animals die naturally from whatever, and other times they are shot. And so when the, the, a lead bullet is used on an animal, it fragments into small little pieces. Uh, if the hunter or the rancher leave the carcass there or parts of the carcass of the animal there, it may have some lead fragments in it. The condors find it, they eat the lead fragments, and then they get sick. Um, it's the number one threat to condors, and it's probably the reason they got down to 22 birds in the first place. Um, it was not understood back when it was happening. Now it's very well understood. What can kids at home do to help the condors? Uh, lots of things. Um, really spread the word about lead toxicity and pollutants and trash and that type of thing. And, and it helps all wildlife, just condors. But uh, most importantly, if you're a hunter, use non-lead bullets. That's going to be the law now, starting in uh, 2019. Uh, you'll have to, if you're hunting in California, you're going to have to use non-lead non uh, ammunition anyway. So hopefully that will help the condors. Remember, condors are wild animals, and the LA Zoo is doing their part to help keep them in the wild. I want to thank the LA Zoo for letting us invade. I'm Jax Malcolm, and I'll see you next time on Conservation Invasion.